Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue, white, and red, official weight, 134, one half pounds. This Olympic gold medal champion is now perfect as a professional with a record consisting of 23 fights, 23 victories, including 16 knockouts. He comes to us from Guantanamo, Cuba. He's the challenger tonight, former featherweight and super featherweight world champion, El Ciclón de Guantanamo, Yuri Ortiz Campbell. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing black and weighing in officially at 134, three quarter pounds. His professional record also perfect. An identical one at 23 fights. 23 victories, including 16 victories by knockout. He's the fighting pride of Omaha, Nebraska, USA. The reigning, defending, undefeated, WBO lightweight champion of the world, Terrence Bud Can the fight live up to the crowd and its high expectations? Well, there's one thing to be sure, Larry, the 19,000 uh, that this place seats, and I don't see many empty seats. They've turned out to support their hometown, Terrence Bud Crawford. Okay, and the chance to go up for Crawford. There's a great electricity in the crowd here. It's wonderful. The atmosphere is terrific. Gina Rodriguez from Chicago, Illinois, very experienced referee. Third man in the ring, scheduled for 12, WBO Lightweight Championship. I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan, along with Larry Merchant and Christina Poncher is with us. And hope wherever you're watching around the world, you're going to enjoy this one. Here we go, round one, 135-pound championship of the world. First jab by Crawford. We got the word that the attendance is 10,943, so they turned out en masse in this arena to see him. That's about a thousand more than saw Joe Fraser. Uh, right, Ron Standard. Right, Ron Standard. For the heavyweight championship of the world some 42 years ago. Crawford, of course, in the black trunks. Cuban fighter Yuriaka Scamboa living in Miami. Wearing the colors of the Cuban flag. Crawford's jab has caught Gamboa off balance as Gamboa was getting ready to load up a shot. Gamboa is showing already uh, that he knows he's going to have to take some chances, that he's just not going to be able to outbox uh, Crawford from outside. Outside, this is the kitchen for. Terrence Crawford, he could stay out here all night and outbox him with that height and reach advantage. And he's plenty content doing so. He spoke about that during the week. If I, I need to make sure I use my reach, my jab, and take advantage of my size, and I'm perfectly comfortable fighting around the outside. But Gamboa's quick handedness uh, is, is evident from here. You know, sometimes when a fighter um, like Crawford is usually the fastest guy in the ring, the quickest guy and he comes up against somebody as quick as him, maybe quicker, it changes the equation. Two minutes gone in round one. Not much has landed. Not much difference between the two fighters so far. If I had to guess, I'd say that Crawford has landed more blows than has Gamboa. But as Larry said, and I expect soon he's going to have to take some risks because he's not going to be at the box this guy like this from this position all night. And Christina, who spent some time with Terrence this week, in spite of the crowd and the reaction that Crawford has, he's perfectly comfortable in doing exactly what he's doing. Good hard jab by Crawford. 
almost buckled the legs of Gamboa. Uh, I think he Gamboa got a little surprised by the pop in that hand. Crawford so calm all week long, such a calm demeanor. And I don't think this crowd will get to him in that sense. I think he'll be very under control all night long, doing exactly what he needs to do. Good right hand on the inside by Crawford. Chopping right hand, so the only punches really landed in the round were off the hands of Crawford. So he gets the first round of my I score sheet. And I see people already dancing in their seats. <laughs> That look of confidence that I saw all week in the eye of Gamboa has switched to a look of concern to me now. He's not fighting Crawford's record, he's fighting Crawford. We go to round two, Century Link Center, Omaha, Nebraska, the Colonel with Larry Merchant and Christina Buncher. That's Yuriokas Gamboa, ranked six in the WBO. It's Terrence Crawford to the right of his screen. He's the champion of the WBO. Third man in the ring, Gino Rodriguez. And here we go in round number two. See if anything changes. There's the jab immediately in the face of Gamboa. Gamboa to the left of your screen. That's Terrence to the right. Red trim on the trunks of uh, Yuri Orcas Gamboa from Cuba. A lot of the questions early was how uh, if Gamboa was going to have any ring rust. You know, it's been a year since he's been in the ring and only twice in the last two years. So not too much of that showing early. Colonel, I think he's he's looking okay out there, but that was a big question that a lot of fight fans had coming into this match was if it was going to show a little rust. Well, it's early to note, you know, but veteran fighter spends a lot of time in the gym. Um, maybe not so much. But at this distance, Crawford can outbox him all night like this. Gamboa is trying to take some shots to come in the inside. Yeah, he's trying to use some smart aggression. Go in, in and out, in and out. Use his quickness. So the light left hook upstairs that time. Does Gamboa. Gamboa as a featherweight. Nothing short of sensational. Now going from 126 to 135, big difference, especially with the height difference that Crawford has. But Gamboa has been fighting taller guys almost his whole career. So he should know how to handle it. But Crawford is not just an average lightweight. He's a lightweight champion with a lot of skills. And a big lightweight. His team speaking somewhat candidly, but it was it was a little tough for him making 135 this time around, Colonel. Yeah, I talked that uh, Bob Aram talked about him wanting to go, or at least the promoter, wanting him to go to 140. But all of that's academic right now. And a little rough on the inside there. And Gino says no. And Boa gives him the bow. Shot landed by Gamboa. He gave that round to Larry. I gave it to Gamboa. So did I. Show you that rabbit punching. And right here, right there. And Gino Rodriguez will admonish him for that. And again, uh, Gino says, hey, watch it. The kid jabbing, jabbing at Jow. He was trying to come with the right hand. Yeah. He stepped back and counter. Yeah. 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 Is it working good? 
So even after two, we get ten more rounds to go. We got us a boxing match. Century Link Center, Omaha, Nebraska. Lightweight Championship of the World, WBO version on the line. Both of these guys, 23 and all. Both have 16 knockouts. Gamboa looks like he's going to put the medal to the pedal in this round. I think, yeah, I think he came out of the last round feeling uh, good about himself that maybe he found the formula uh, to deal with the upright Crawford uh, and all of his ad advantages. The ball seems very strong. Pushing badly, doesn't give any ground. Terrence loads up the right. You saw what happened. Whistling past the ear. It is an example, Colonel, uh, that I was talking about earlier. That when a fighter suddenly needs somebody who might be a little quicker than him uh, or as quick, uh, you know, suddenly the picture changes. Good right hand on the inside, but didn't hurt Gamboa. Gamboa landed some flush shots in there too. Crawford uh, elects to go for southpaw for a couple of seconds and he gets whacked. Yep. Gamboa is beating him to the punch. Literally. Gamboa lands a light right and then a, a decent left hand. And this left handed style. To me, is not working for Terrence right now. Uh, Gambo has seen a lot of left handed punches in his day. Cheekbones a little bit puffy on the face of Gambo so far. Decent left hand landed by Gambo. I think Terrence is better defensively when he fights right handed. Another solid punch there. Closing seconds of the third round. They exchange shots, but I think Gamboa get the better of it. A little smile on Gamboa's lips at the end of that round. I gave that round to Gamboa. As did I. Show you a bit of the uh, holding right here. You see, Gino comes in, gives a voice command, then he finally has to separate the two guys. The right hand landing, another right hand. And that's part of the reason why I gave that round to. Yuri Yorkas Gamboa. So, first three rounds, two out of the three rounds, the my score sheet goes to Gamboa. Dennis Nelson of Minnesota, Robert Heckel of Illinois, and Levi Martinez of New Mexico are the official judges, all experienced men. This is round four, Century Link Center, the hometown of the champion, Terrence Crawford. Now let's see if Crawford can make an adjustment from the last two rounds that may or may not have gone in favor of Gamboa. They have an our score sheets, but we're unofficial.
Chops him with the right hand, fighting the softball stance. You know, a question that has to be asked in this fight is, uh, can a fighter who comes from a place where fighters are not usually come, don't usually come from, beat a fighter who comes from a place where a lot of good fighters come from? Irrespective of their individual standings in the place, that you know, Gamboa has been around the block um, in a culture that has boxing deeply embedded in it in Cuba. I'd say even though Crawford uh, trains sometimes as a southpaw, oftentimes as a southpaw, his punches aren't as powerful when he fights in this manner, and he's getting hit more. Is that right hand by Gamboa? Terrence doesn't look as good boxing as a southpaw as he does as a right handed fighter. He thinks that he has a lot more power in his left hand when he fights as a southpaw, and that's why he does it. And he gets nailed more. Yeah, he's susceptible to that right hand of Gamboa every time he switches, Colonel. Well, he's not switching, he's just fighting left handed now. Is the left hand get through, but did it shake Gamboa? Gamboa's on the assault, putting pressure still on the champion. And he he took Crawford's punch really well in there. Crawford landed a solid shot. And that was a question too coming into the fight, Larry, was Gamboa's chin. It's been a question. Well, he's been down six times in his career, but he's always come off the canvas. Two undefeated fighters. Identical records, identical knockout percentage. The Billions round four. Is that uh, sneaky shot that Gamboa get in at the end, end of the hole? Take the Selms at all time. There were times for Crawford in that round, but I thought Gamboa landed the heavier blows. I'm giving it to him on my score sheet. I've got Gamboa winning three of the first four rounds. Thirty nine thirty seven after four. I Not that it's a better. All right, so it's time for Crawford to make an adjustment. The first one I make is go back fighting as a right handed fighter, but he's going to fight as a southpaw again. If he thinks that fighting as a southpaw is confusing Gamboa, it's not confusing him in the slightest. I don't think he's trying to confuse Gamboa. I think that when he was fighting him in his conventional style, he just saw that Gamboa had an advantage over him, which solved him, and that he, he just feels he has to fight him southpaw. Yet he won the first round, Larry. He's lost the last three, in my opinion. Yeah, well. So, you know, but that's, you I know, you may be right. That's what he's thinking. Yeah. He doesn't know he's lost, and he may not have. But I mean, that's the way I see it, anyway. Well, I have it uh, two one and one even. I know officials don't score even rounds, but I do. Little wealth alongside the eye of right eye of Gamboa. He's had that puffy uh, cheek for a couple of rounds now. Good little right hand hook by Crawford. Crawford walks him back on his heels. Gamboa doesn't like it. I remember Terrence said when he fights as a southpaw, he feels like he has more power with his left, but he's not landing many lefts.
I think Terrence needs to go back to using the jab a little bit more. Keeping that distance. Now he's trying to figure this guy out. He's not touching him when he's jabbing as a softball. As this kid Gambo is very quick on his feet and with his hands. Oh, he hurt him with the right hand. Yeah, he started with his with the left hand. He hurt him with the right and the left hand dropped him. Now how about that? And the roof is about to blow in this place, Colonel. Gamboa got a little too reckless. Well, you said he was going to have to at some stage, and he's real reckless now, but his legs aren't there. Terrence touches him up with a pretty good jab, whacks him with the left hand, downstairs, loads up with the right hand. Gamboa he's is fighting, fighting right back right valiantly, but is he hurt, as you say? He is hurt. Try to hang on. Terrence imposing his will on Gamboa right now. But Gamboa he... is staggering. Slides to his right, nail with another right hand. He's ready to go again. But we're out of time in the fifth round. Nails him again. He's back on his heels. <laughs> Listen to the crowd. No smile on Gamboa's lips at the end of this round. Great round for Terrence. Beautiful and Gamboa saved by the bell. And Boa blinking in his corner, still trying to, to find his senses. Here's Gamboa now. And he's nailed with that left hand and dropped. You're right, Larry, he was getting brave. And he was out of position. And the rest of this round, he's fighting on instinct. More importantly, he took some heavy shots at the end of that round, so let's see how he can approach this and where where his body and his legs are under him. I don't believe a guy can recover from the kind of damage he was experiencing at the end of the fifth round. We'll see. Well, at the very least, with that knockdown, that uh, evens out the fight, I think, on our cards, right, Colonel, at 47 all. Yeah, at the very least. But that's the least important thing right now. The thing is, can he continue the pace? He's fighting as a right-handed fighter now. And he continues to hurt Gamboa. Gamboa's legs aren't there at all. Uh, but he's making a stand uh, to his credit. And I still expect Terrence to be cautious in a way and be patient. I don't expect him to, to get out of his style. Is Terrence back as a southpaw again? Well, you and I have discussed this Southwest stuff ad nauseum, but he made it work for him. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> and as Gamboa, who was down for the seventh time in his career in the fifth round, his legs aren't 100% just yet. Like Gamboa is throwing caution to the wind. He's trying to nail this guy. Yeah, he's showing us. He's a what fighter. he's made of. Yeah, he's a fighter. Whether he can weather this kid or not, um, he is showing us that he's got some. He got cracked by a good. You, you don't get to be as good as him over such a long period of time with with how, having a, not having a lot of fortitude. Well, he's got that for sure. His legs still aren't yeah, there, I was and we're say. almost two minutes into this sixth round. Very flat-footed. I was just going to say that, Colonel. Still looking a little shaky as he kind of walks forward with heavy feet. He's not just looking shaky. He is shaky, Christina. And I don't think Terrence realizes that he's still in trouble. Now he gets up on his toes a little bit and bounces around. Almost his left knee buckled underneath him. Talking about Gamboa. Yeah. Boy gets down with another straight left hand that time. Three five seconds to go in the round. Crawford boxing nicely as a softball now.
Closing seconds now. This is the sixth round. The bell ends the sixth. Another round for Terrence Crawford. And for the first time since the first round, I get Crawford back ahead in the fight. This is that two point round. That's right. Terrence Crawford's mom is at the fight, and look at her during the last round, Deborah Crawford. Looks like she's ready to pass out. <laughs> well, this is a moment for the Crawfords that will be indelible. And it's a moment for Omaha. And now can Terrence Crawford continue what he started in the fifth round as we move to the second half of the fight with Crawford out in front in the fight now. The legs appear to be back of Yuriorkas Gamboa. Crawford pointing out to the ref that it's slippery. There are a few ice pieces of ice still on, on the map there, but ref says fight on. Crawford continues to fight as a southpaw. When he got Gamboa in trouble, it strange he went back to fighting as an orthodox fighter, and he's been fighting southpaw ever since. As uh, Gamboa just slipped on a piece of that ice. Well, also sometimes you see that the uh, advertisements on the mat can be slipperier, slippery. Well, the thing is, for some reason, the Cuban corner people love to pour water down a guy's shorts. So he's dripping water all over the place. And of course, once I get there's actually a puddle on the Ducati sign in the center of the ring, and that's where they're slipping. And those shorts drenched. Right now, they're, they're thoroughly dripping all over the yeah, place. It looks like a bathing suit. Well, which suggests that they've been doing everything possible to revive him. To, to revive him, correct. As they should. Crawford trying to pot shot him and catch him. Right hand has been effective. Gamboa continues to slip. Step on each other's front feet. Gamboa's doing a lot of slipping. And it's his own corner's own fault because, I mean, to describe his, his trunks are bathing suit right now. They're dripping that much, folks. And he's distracted by it because he keeps looking down. Now Gamboa's legs are totally back, so whatever they've done in the corner, he's revived. And as I say that, he gets whacked. Well, as you pointed out, Colonel, he's been looking down, and when he looked down, Crawford popped him. Distracted by the wet shorts and his footing on the canvas. Because he moves a lot. He bounces around. He slides left to right. He fights up on his toes all the time. Compared to the early rounds, uh, Gamboa looks like he's going through motions now. Not, not as serious and as alive and well. Look at him. They just give him a shower in the corner. That's crazy. Crawford won that round, by the way. Very slippery, very slippery. Yeah, he's not even sitting down anymore. <laughs> All those punches that Gamboa threw and nothing really touched Crawford. Now we see the advantage of the taller guy. 
Gina Rodriguez says, hey, get that corner cleaned up over there. As uh, Ron Stander, he knows the camera's on him. He's still fighting after all these years. Still throwing punches. All right, here we go to round number eight. The Colonel Bond shirt and Larry Merchant, Christina Ponker. Watching top rank boxing. We're at the CenturyLink Center in Omaha, Nebraska. You the know, home of the guy in the black trunks, Terrence Crawford. You know, Crawford is ambidextrous. I mean, his turning southpaw is not a tactic for a moment to try to confuse his opponent. No, he, he trains. He trains to do that. And that's different from what I talk about all the time. And he's successful at it. I mean, he got Gamboa in trouble when he was fighting as a southpaw. It just struck me funny that he turned back right-handed when he was in the process of pummeling him. But that's okay. If a guy trains that way, that's why. And as you said, the guy is ambidextrous. It's different from a guy using it for any other reason. Round eight action continues. Slowed down just a bit in terms of the amount of punches being landed by either fighter. As Gamboa has stopped being aggressive. Yeah, he, I don't think he's thrown a punch this round, Larry. There. You know, it's one punch at a time, uh, hoping something happened and making something happen. But you can't count him out. Uh, Crawford's never been in with somebody like this, and until he does it, he hasn't done it. Yeah, and by the way, with all that said, there's only two points in my score sheet separating the two fighters. And the whole difference in the fight is the knockdown. Back in the fifth round. So while the crowd in attendance is going virtually nuts, I don't know how far ahead Crawford really is on the score sheets. He's ahead. Well, I don't know if there's a home fit, if, if there's necessarily going to be a hometown advantage, but there shouldn't be a hometown disadvantage. And, uh, he'll get credit for everything he does at the very least. Oh, here's Gamboa in the process of landing some shots. No. Oh, down. Yeah. He dropped him. Hit him with the right hand and the left hand, and the knee went down. As the... soon as Gamboa got offensive, Crawford dropped him again. But you said that he'd take risk, and he had to take risk, and it hurt him. So Gamboa has been down twice in the fight now, but that changes the whole complexion of the fight right now. Because Gamboa is still on his feet. There's not a lot of time left in this eighth round. There he is again. And he got hurt again as Gamboa was showing his shoe shine punches. Crawford blasted him one more time. Crawford showing his chin at two. Every time the Gamboa comes in and hits him with something, Gamboa seems to get some confidence. Terrence comes right back. And... All right, let's take a look at this knockdown. Now you see who's on the assault, not really landing many blows, and then bang, right across the jaw, left hand, and a solid right hand. And it dropped it down to the canvas. Gino just got himself in position to make that call because he was kind of behind. Gino Rodriguez being the official that was able to call that immediately when that foot hit the canvas. And now, Yuriokas Gamboa is getting pummeled at the end of the eighth round. He was able to recover after he went down in the fifth, but here we go to the ninth. Well, Gamboa has to know now that he's got to make something happen. Well, he's got to throw all caution to the wind. If he gets stopped, he gets stopped, but he can't win without, as you say, taking a lot of risk now. Being knocked down twice, he knows he's behind, no matter what happened in the third, fourth, and fifth round. Uh, actually, the second, third, and fourth. Right hand landed, and now Crawford's going back to conventionally lands an uppercut. Solid uppercut. 
think Crawford looks a little off balance right now. Yeah. Did he get hit by something in there? No, no, he, he just switched. There he did switch it mid, in mid-course because that right hook from the left-handed position has been a very uh, imposing weapon for him. I don't know, Colonel. Terrence's legs look a little wobbly. Uh, right now, they do look a little. I agree changed. with you, Christina. Yeah. I think he get hit by something. I, I would have to. Agree. And he might have been caught in the switch, and that can happen, no matter well, how skilled you are at changing. Well, I'm not sure what happened either. But when he went back to the corner after the last round, he looked a little tired to me. The intensity of this fight, uh, and a young fighter who hasn't experienced it before, and whose emotions must be running very high can take a lot out of you. We'll see if he has the composure, the skill, the will. His legs, Larry, don't look to me like they look. And he makes a big mistake by turning his back. He's lucky he wasn't clubbed behind the head. Because Gamboa is a fighter. He's been down twice in the fight. And it's my belief that he hurt Terrence Crawford at some stage in this ninth round. Hey, Crawford cracked him again. It straightened out the right leg of Gamboa. He drops him again. That's a hard knockdown that time with the left hook. So if Gamboa is tough and Crawford would hurt, how about that? 27, 26 seconds. He still has time to finish him off. 22 seconds, he's back at him. Gamboa is totally out on his feet. Can Crawford catch him one more time? There's no quit in Gamboa. He keeps battling, falling forth. Uppercut drops him again. It's all over. Terrence Crawford has stopped. Yuriakis Gamboa to defend his title in his hometown. Terrence Crawford has become an American star. This is Terrence Crawford's coming out party in his own backyard. Well, we, I mean, he knocked him down we questioned whether, even though Crawford had scored two knockdowns, we questioned what was going on with him. And he showed that he has some bottom and bottle to be a real champion. Remember, there were stages in that round where I thought that he might have been hurt, and he drops him with a vicious left hook. Never before defeated, obviously never knocked out. One of the most celebrated amateurs of his time. At 32, Gamboa gets stopped. And at 26, Terrence Crawford has given his hometown something to cheer about. They couldn't have asked for a better performance and a more spectacular way to end this fight than the way that Terrence Crawford did tonight, Colonel. Four knockdowns and uh, eventually a TKO victory for him. And again, I thought that there was a stage in that ninth round where he might have been hurt. I don't know if that's a fact or not, but I had the feeling. But if it was, it just says more to the tremendous bottle that this guy has, as they say in England. I mean, he, he performed really admirably. Well, and there, was there pressure on him, or was there an opportunity? He Brandon, made this an opportunity and put himself on the boxing map big time. His promoters and handlers are dancing now You're in the ring. That. <laughs> that you can be sure of. And which way does he go now? Who does he fight next? Well, and, uh, and putting on a. The end comes at two minutes, 53 seconds of round number nine. The winner by knockout victory. The fighting pride of Omaha, Nebraska, USA, still WBO lightweight champion of the world, Terrence Boo.